Once upon a time during the Victorian age, there was an invention called the Zotrope. The device is an early example of how people made the illusion of movement many years before the invention of film. As you can see in this video, the device and the pictures inside are rotated through a simple mechanism, so that when you watch the action through the vertical holes, the birds are suddenly moving. The Zotrope and other variations of it have been in use ever since the 1830s. Fast forward to 1877 and to Charles Emile Renault, who patented the Praxinoscope, which was a proper evolution of the Zotrope. This modern recreation shows wonderfully how it works, and we can see that the images are being reflected by the mirrors in the middle, giving clearer images and motion that is much more fluent. But Renault did not stop at this. After improving the idea with the Praxinoscope Theatre, he moved it even further to make a projection Praxinoscope, using a set of mirrors to display the images on a static background. His biggest breakthrough, however, would come with the Theatre Optique, a large-scale projection Praxinoscope meant to show the images to a bigger audience. The long-term benefit for film in general is that he was the first one ever to use perforations on images, which are those holes you see in film reels. This is how it works. First, the static background is placed. Then, using light and carefully placed mirrors, the moving characters are reflected on the static background. This is how the combination of the two reaches the audience. Well, in the last video I mentioned how projected films didn't really start until 1895. Well, for films this is true, the kinetoscope was still the boss. But Renault's animations went there a bit earlier, so you could call this a sort of a proto-cartoon. From 1892 to 1900, Renault worked in Paris, presenting the first animated pictures ever to be shown on a bigger screen to a bigger crowd. He called them the Pantomime de Minus. We're going to take a short look on two of the animations in their restored state. The first one is Pavre Pirot, one of the earliest works. The story is rather simple. Here comes Arlequin jumping over a wall, coming to meet his sweetheart Colombine. Both of them share a moment of infatuation until poor old Pierrot arrives. Arlequin hides and watches in the shadow as Pierrot makes the moves on Colombine. To impress her further, he decides to serenade her, but not before he hits the booze. Now we see Arlequin being a bit of an asshole, trying to scare Pierrot into thinking they are ghosts. Pierrot is like, am I imagining things? Ah, never mind, let's hit the booze again. So after a while, Arlequin sneaks around Pierrot and scares the living daylights out of him, making him run out of the courtyard. After which he appears to be... shuffling? Shake that. And finally proceeding to... Uh, share a private moment with Columbine. This works pretty well as a cartoon, it can even pass as a simple short one even today. Though, as I said, this is a restored version where the two components of background and characters are completely joined together. This wouldn't have been the same experience people at the time would have. This has over 500 individually painted still pictures, and at the time, it wouldn't have lasted 3 to 4 minutes as this version, but 12 to 15 minutes, with piano music playing and usually Renault you know, narrating what's going on. The other short is called A Tua d'une Cabine. The story is equally simple, a couple comes to bathe on a beach. The lady is playing with her dog before proceeding to change in the cabin, but is rudely knocked over by an elderly sir. If that wasn't enough, the man goes all peeping Tom at her until her guy comes and kicks his butt. Literally. After the gentleman is chased out, they proceed to have their bath until a boat comes on to signal the end of the presentation. Unfortunately, these two clips are the only ones left and for a very sad reason. The Pantomime Luminous have been seen by almost half a million people by the 1900, but the success of the Kinematograph ruined him. Even though he tried to innovate, he failed in doing so and fell into deep depression. Before his death in a hospice in 1918, he destroyed the Théâtre Optique with his own hands and threw all the bands except for the two shown in the Seine River. Truly an unfortunate end for such a creative man. I'll see you soon.